everyone. Good afternoon on this Wednesday. Amanda Grace here with you. We have a special guest with us, which I'm going to bring uh, in in a few minutes. Andrew Sorcini is here with us from Beverly Hills Precious Metals. He loves to answer your questions, so get your questions ready because we're going to be asking him questions directly from the chat. He's going to be here talking about two things that are going on right now uh, in the world as far as finances, which gives us wisdom and, and helps us decide how we should manage and steward what the Lord has given us. So welcome to everybody coming on from the United States of America and around the world. Hello to our Ark of Grace team and our moderators. Thank you for helping us do what we do for the Lord. So I'm just going to open up in prayer quick, and then we're going to bring Andrew on. And he is just going to start answering your questions. So Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, we come before you. We praise you, Lord, that you are God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality, and might, Father God. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise due your name. Lord, we just humble ourselves before you this day, asking that the pull of the flesh becomes less in our lives, so you, your will, and your power become more in our lives. We acknowledge you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to the earth in the form of a man, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He died at Calvary. He purchased us by the shedding of his blood. He rose again in three days, ascended back into heaven, has victoriously been seated at the right hand of the Father, ruling and reigning forevermore. Father, we just invite your presence in, Lord, this day that you would lead us in all wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverential fear of the Lord, that the Holy Spirit would lead and guide and order our steps, Father God. Thank you for this time, Lord. And we just praise you, Lord, that you are the potter and we are merely the clay and you are the author and finisher of our faith. We praise you this day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay. Here comes Andrew. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Good, good. Glad to be back. We've had uh, so many inquiries through the Ark of Grace family and uh, and I've just been wanting to come back so I can... Um, so we can spread the word and uh, explain people, explain to people how this works. So yes, well, before we get into our viewer questions, because they're already getting their questions ready in the chat, uh, what, let's talk about what's going on right now in in finance and, and markets as a whole, so people can kind of utilize this to help them. Sure. Well, the biggest news for this week has been um, was been. The Fed Reserve has actually said that interest rates are going to have to go up at a faster rate than what they were already planning. So um, the interest rates for people that um, are taking a mortgage loan are right now are about 7%. And um, this is just getting very high. The, and I believe we're going to get to the highest level since uh, about 1980 by the time they're done. And wow. for people that might not remember, back then the interest rates were like 10, 11%. So uh, it's actually uh, this is a this is a bad sign for the economy because it shows that the government's trying to prop up the economy until we can weather the storm. Now, what happened in the 80s that it went up that high? It's it was pretty much the same thing. It was just okay. another another cycle. It was um, it was the first part of us starting to see that um, it isn't a good policy to be able to print money to get out of debt to yeah. and to buy things that we don't need with money that we don't have. Yeah. And um, back in 1971 is when we officially went off of the gold standard. And it was about nine or 10 years later when re we really started to suffer the consequences of that. But now it's it's hundreds of times worse than it was back then. And, and, you know, that's a good point you made just now about uh, buying stuff you don't need with money you don't have. This is why we have to be careful with credit in the credit system, because it works the same way. And we have to use wisdom with that, because we see by the national debt that they have bought a lot of things with money they don't have. It's true. And credit card use is at an all time high. Like really? right now, the, the balances are at the highest that they've ever been. People wow. out there can actually Google that and you'll find numerous articles about it. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's a result of, of COVID-19 and the shutdowns that happened. I think mm -hmm. that um, that as globally, we banded together and we just said, OK, we're going to we're going to fight this thing. We're, we're going to be fine. We're going to stay at home and uh, yeah. and everything's going to be great. And we saw stocks go up. We saw gold and silver go up in value. We saw um, cryptocurrency go sky high. Our real estate uh, went up in value. And really, it shouldn't have because so many people were not working and, um, and a lot of businesses were out there failing. And, um, 
people were using their credit cards and they still are. And, and a lot of people are not back to work and everything costs more. Inflation's probably realistically at about 20%. So it's, um, people need to do things to protect themselves against this uh, hyperinflation. Okay, and so what can they do to protect themselves? Well, over time, gold and silver, but mostly gold go up over time. So, at this, so as time goes on, your dollars are, are buying less and less and less and less. We've seen that when you go to the market and you try to buy things like eggs. Mm -hmm. it's, um, the price has doubled on that. But the value of your dollar is not buying more than what it bought before. It's buying significantly less. Mm -hmm. So you need to hedge with gold or silver, something that goes up when, when the, the uh, economy starts to be difficult. Well, th that I agree with. And it's always good to hedge. It is, you know, because because it puts in cushions and a protection for you. A lot of portfolios, they they do that. They hedge, they they diversify, they do certain things. So if you see a, a total hit in one area, you've got the three other areas to prop exactly. that portfolio up. I know because I, I did this in the hedge fund world yeah. <laughs> in my early 20s. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And the, the big banks are doing that. They don't want people to go out and invest into gold and silver, but they're doing it to be able to hedge their portfolios. And and we're seeing um, China and Russia do it right now, too. Like China is getting just buying tons of gold from all over the world. But um, surprisingly enough, most China. of that gold is coming from here. And you're America. kidding me. Yeah. China is buying tons of gold around the world, and most of the gold they're buying is coming from the U.S. No wonder why balloons are being sent into our into uh, you know airspace that it has no business being sent. Exactly, and I, I think that we're gonna we're gonna see a big reset worldwide when it comes to how we buy things, and and that's why they're trying to do the central bank digital currency, mm -hmm. where everything could be. Any transaction that you do, you just do it with your phone or your computer. It can all be tracked. It's not backed by anything real, but um, people are hedging their bets with gold. People make no mistake. This is one of the reasons Iran wants to have an agreement with China right now, because they see them buying up so many of the resources that this is why the leadership of Iran, one of the reasons, mm -hmm. wants uh, you know a nice little agreement there with China. Yes, and many of the other uh, countries, the, the governments for these countries are trading for goods and services in gold or currencies other than the dollar. And for years, it's always been dollars. So so um, back in the day, I remember you see like these, um, like a supermodel that lives in England would choose to get paid for any work that she does worldwide in US dollars. But we're starting to see that ne not be the case anymore. People mm -hmm. wanna get paid in, in the Euro People that are in uh, that are in uh, Russia or China want to get paid in the in the yuan, and um, so the dollar is losing its reserve currency status, and that's by design. That's where the BRICS nations have have um, have gathered together to to try to to try to tank the dollar. So for us, um, we we have to fight back, and the best way that we could fight back is have tangible assets so that we can uh, protect everything that we've worked our whole lives for. And of course, you're still going to need some cash to because you need to go out and buy gas for your car or go out and buy groceries or pay your mortgage. But uh, but it's you want to be prepared because winter is coming. Exactly. Now, speaking of hedgeable um, assets. So Trudy Payton Davis says, Andrew, my financial company requires that we continue to stay with their company until 2025. We do have a Roth IRA that we could possibly switch over. Is this normal for them to require you to it's, stay um, with them through a certain amount of time. Yeah, we see a lot of these and, and you're not locked in. You can go at any time because let's say that you had a hardship where it's almost a life or death situation that you had to access your retirement funds or whatever funds you have with this firm, you would be able to get those. So they scare you and tell you that you'll get taxed. They scare you and tell you that, um, that there are big penal penalties and there possibly are big penalties and you'll want to check on that. But uh, if you roll over a Roth or a traditional IRA into one that holds precious metals through us, it is a non-taxable event. So it's um, you have to fight back with these institutions because uh, they're being told from way up top to not let people pull their funds out. Very interesting. Now, this is uh, kind of 
connected, but but not as much. This is from uh, the Storm Chaser. Heard Lo uh, Lloyd's of London insures vaulted metals. How can they be trusted? So how do you know if somebody who is insures vaulted metals can be trusted? It's um, I, I don't believe it most of the time. It's um, we use a vault at Delaware Depository and um, I see reports. I access it on a daily basis. So for me, uh, I believe in that. I like it because it's here stateside and, and I can go and visit that place. And also I can have um, gold and silver delivered here overnight. But um, I think Lloyd's of London is is very, very large. I used to use them to ensure our shipments and people are probably okay with that. But I'm just afraid that many of these things would be um, paper assets or paper backed gold and silver. And to me, that's just a house of cards. That's like a, a legalized Ponzi scheme where where they're selling these assets many times over, where if um, everybody wanted to withdraw on the same day, the it wouldn't be there. Well, you know, that's where paper backed. Yes, it, it's I think it's difficult to do that. I need I think you need the physical. Yes, physical yes. asset. Exactly. Yeah. And um, and looking at this next question um, for the person that um, that just asked about the uh, 20,000 in savings, um, yes, Kim I'll give you a good, honest answer that you won't get at most of the other gold firms out there. For me, I would say um, take about 10 percent of that and, uh, and invest in, in physical silver. These are the 90 percent silver coins that you got from us, Amanda. Mm -hmm. These are the dimes, quarters or half dollars dated 1964 and before, just keep a, a couple thousand dollars worth of it at home in case of emergency. And, and there are times when you might need that to barter with. And one example is here in California, these people that live up in the mountains where they have skiing, yes. they're, um, we had really bad snow here and the people are trapped up there. They can't come down for food. I saw the videos. Oh yeah. my goodness. Pray for the people up in the mountains of California because it is not yeah. a good situation. Exactly. So for if there are people up there uh, in the mountains, you would like to think that everybody's neighborly where if you were my neighbor, you could if I had extra food, you could come over and you can have some. But some people might want to sell part of what they have. If you don't have access to an ATM or what if there's no Internet or you, you would want to be able to have something to barter with. And that's what the 90 percent silver is good for. But um, for the person with the 20,000 in savings, you're going to want to have almost all of that as your emergency fund. And I would uh, strongly advise that, uh, that you don't dip into that too much. Could you help them if they, with the 2000? Absolutely. Um, in the past, we've had minimums where, where we weren't allowing to pe people to do transactions under 10,000. And it's only because of the volume was just so high, we just couldn't handle it. And, uh, but now we're set up a lot better and we could accommodate um, purchases and investments around 2000, 5000 or under ten thousand. Wonderful, uh, Joanne Robinson. Do they send it to your home? I know the answer to this, but I'll let you answer. Andrew. Absolutely. Um, um, <laughs> we almost always send it directly to your home. It's uh, sent discreetly via UPS or FedEx, sometimes post office. It's fully insured, and uh, for people that don't feel safe having physical gold and silver at home, we can refer you to a vault that we use. I personally use it and have the bulk of our inventory there, and. Uh, I feel very confident with them and I'm able to sleep at night knowing that it's there. Well, well yes, uh, you know, we have, you know, as well, and we take precautions, but we have it physically. Uh, and so, yes, they do send it to you in, a, in an unmarked box. Yes. I can tell you that from my experience. Uh, Mary Roller, she says, I actually have gold. How much is it worth now? How much is it worth, Andrew? Gold's at $1,816 an ounce. and. Okay. Um, and it's it's dropped quite a bit in the last four four weeks or so. And for people out there, we don't get caught up too much in the day to day. If if it, if your silver goes down, if your gold goes down, it's not a big deal because this is your insurance policy for the rest of your portfolio. If you invested in gold and silver with your retirement, you're not looking at uh, your retirement performance in a, a small window of four weeks. You're looking at it uh, from now till the time that you think you're going to retire. And, uh, and that's how you judge what it's doing or not doing. So um, gold is cheap now. So if anybody out there is on the fence about uh, getting involved, you wouldn't be getting into gold anywhere near the high, which for me is, uh, is a very favorable, favorable time to do it. It is a favorable time. And, and for people who can't um, 
necessarily purchase it at this moment. This is all good for you to know. So when the time comes, say you 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 come into some a little extra money, you have a little extra to do this with. This is always good to know for now. Also, yes. Um. To to Amanda's point, it, it is very important to get educated on this because as things start to progress, I, I think um be, before we get to the better times again, I think things are going to get tough here. That's and what you mean by winter is coming because people yeah. are asking, what does he mean by that? So what he's saying is yeah. it's going to get a little tougher before it gets better. Absolutely. So um, as things start to get tougher, we're going to see a lot of people out there, a lot of individuals, a lot of um, big companies start to pile into um, gold and silver purchases and the price is going to go higher. The premiums will go higher. You're going to feel like if you don't do something now that you're going to miss out and Oftentimes, when you feel that type of urgency, you're you're making an emotional decision, and uh, and that's when a lot of mistakes can be made, or people can try to I'm take glad advantage. You're saying of you. that, Andrew, and you're telling people not to make emotional decisions on this. Yes, it's um, mm -hmm. and oftentimes when I, when I'm talking to someone and and they're teetering at the point where it's yes or no, I just um, I take my salesman hat off and I just say, look. Why don't we break on this right now? Let's talk another time. It sounds to me like you might need to go home and just pray about it, okay? I'm not telling you that I don't want to, to sell you the gold or silver, but I just don't want you to feel pressured. So just relax, talk with your family, pray about it. Um, you'll have questions. You can text me with those questions or call me or email me with those questions. I'll answer them. And then you come back to us when you feel comfortable enough to say yes or no. I think that's very wise advice to to give is to pray about it, pray about it, and we'll revisit it. That is using wisdom. So Claudia Washington wants to know what is the process when someone contacts your company because you hired more people, Andrew. Oh, we have so many people here. Yes. So reach out to us on bh-pm.com. That's our website. Put that up. Yep. Right here. Yeah, right, right there. It is right on the home page. Just fill out the online form. And uh, when it, so put in your first name, last name, email address, phone number. Say you learned out, uh, learned about us from Amanda or Ark of Grace or Amanda Grace. We'll know it's you. Then um, on the bottom part, put in as much about yourself as you can. So these questions that people are posting here are excellent questions. And mm -hmm. that helps me get you to the right person. So um, one of the ones that I saw through the Ark of Grace family today, just earlier this morning, was please have someone call me that has the patience to explain how this works to someone that knows absolutely nothing about it. And I love that because I, we do have people like that. Um, I, theoretically, I guess uh, everyone here is like that, but you might catch someone uh, on a day where they don't have a lot of time and maybe they don't want to take the time to explain it. But I have some people that are very, very, very good at doing that. So so um, the more specific you are about what it is that you're hoping to learn or accomplish, the better that I the better that I could do to get you to the right person. That's one. Now Renee Gregory is actually she's one of our moderators. Okay. So she for <laughs> for Renee, I would always recommend that if you got it from us, if you obtained your gold or silver from us, that you should reach out to us because we feel an obligation to give you top dollar if you got it through us. And um, if you go into the local coin dealer, what's usually going to happen is, is they're just going to offer you what we call spot price. And spot price is just the price of silver that day without any premium added to it. And the premium is, um, is the cost of silver per ounce above the actual value of silver for that day. And all silver has a has a premium, so that's completely yeah. unavoidable. And um, and what the local coin shops do is um, they belong to the same dealer network that I do. They just turn around and sell it back to us. They're just collecting it bit by bit by bit, and when they have bulk, they sell it to companies like us. So um, usually, what they'll do is they'll kind of lowball you. And I'm not saying in by any means that they're bad people. That's how they earn a living. It's just you can get them <coughs> through us. I don't know what happened, but something went down my throat. Well, I'll just chat again about um, about um, we do precious metals IRAs. So a lot of people from Ark of Grace um, will reach out and say, hey, I've got a 401k. And um, and I heard that uh, you could roll that over into a precious metals IRA. 
and you can do that. And there are no fees at whatsoever for doing that is from your 401k company. There's no penalties for us. It costs about $200 a year to get it set up. And, um, and it's, it's not a taxable event. You can roll over IRAs and they hold physical gold and silver that's held at a depository in a lockbox with your name on it. Okay. Um, Marla, what if you have old silver coins? You know, so, like the old ones? Sure. All of us got his kids. Yep. So, so um, all of us it, somewhere in a sock drawer have old dime quarters, half dollars, maybe even silver dollars. Anything dated 1964 and before is 90% silver. And that is the best kind of silver, in my opinion, that you could possibly own because these are non-reportable silver. This is, um, this is silver. When you go to sell it, it doesn't generate a 1099. You're not reported on your taxes. Whereas if you had silver bars, that's bullion. And those are, uh, that's taxable silver. Yes, so. bullion is taxable. Remember that. Yes. Gold it's, too, right? Yes. Gold bullion, but all gold, correct, is taxable? That's correct. So yes. if, if you had, say, um, old coins from like the 1920s, old gold coins from the 1920s or even the late 1800s, those um, fall into what we call a semi-numismatic category. And numismatic is just the fancy word for um, collectible. So um, that, by definition, falls into a collector's item and it makes it not taxable. But of course, if you did buy a coin for you know thousand dollars somewhere and it turned out to be worth five hundred thousand and you sold it yes. you would be on the hook for taxes but that's you wouldn't mind but well, um, because that's capital is that like capital gains it tax? Is. almost it is it's a capital gains tax you had capital you gained off of it that's what capital exactly gains. so so that would just be a normal situation but um i always advise that you have the type of gold and silver that you could own privately that is not reported when you sell it and um that to me is a big benefit because it I've for my job, for, for what I do here at Beverly Hills Precious Metals, every year I pay my taxes. So what I do with my, with my tax, like my post-tax dollars should be my business and only my business. So That's I just right. want to have the private assets. Amen to that, Andrew. So <laughs> Kate, Katie of Bacon says, if we have 20,000 cash, is it safer in the bank or in our home? Oh, that's a good question. I think I'd probably go half and half because okay. you know, just to the point of the people up in the California mountains, it's they need something to barter with. Those people are there are situations like that everywhere. We saw it recently in uh, I believe it was um, Syria and Turkey where they had the earthquake. You yes. need something to be able to buy things with in an emergency. And um, and uh, we still do need the banks to some degree, although we're doing our best to completely eliminate them. I'd mm -hmm. like to see that happen at some point. But uh, I think half and half is good. Okay. Now, this is an interesting question because this is still on banks. Are local credit unions safer than private banks? Oh, I believe so. I do. Yes. yes. Really? Especially for a lot Why of do you people. Believe that? Yeah, I, I believe it because a lot of them are through um, like different unions. I've seen like um, mm -hmm. like the uh, electrical people that are electrical workers, they have a union. And I believe that um, that those credit unions actually do have their back in the in the end, though. They are all part of the centralized banking system. And uh, for me, I, I feel that there's great value in owning assets that are outside of that centralized banking system. And that's not Bitcoin. That's not Ethereum. That's not Ripple. It's not uh, any of these cryptocurrencies. All that stuff's reported. And if we really are going to a central bank digital currency, you'll this might be your last chance to own assets like gold and silver outside of that centralized banking system. Exactly. So Bella Morris asked, my husband just came into a lot of money. He wants to pay off our house. Is that a good decision? I want him to invest in gold and silver. It sounds like there is a little marital disagreement here over what to do with the funds. I, I think usually I would say um, pay off the house. It. Um, I, I think that um, at this point, being that we're heading into what's probably going to be a deep recession, I think we're we're just starting to see the fallout from uh, from the COVID shutdowns. And uh, it, it might be advantageous to just pay off a portion of it now and save much of that for emergency. So um, so when people actually, 
when people have a situation like that where maybe they've just sold a property or they've just come into some cash, oftentimes I would recommend gold because gold is a great store of value. You can park your funds in gold knowing that you need them in say six months or three months or a year. And um, oftentimes you could feel safe having it in gold. Then when you go to sell it, you're selling it for pretty much what you paid for it. And gold would have done its job at that point. Exactly. Um, this is interesting. She, Joanne Robin, uh, Robinson asks, can you take payment through Western Union? How do you take payment, Andrew? Maybe you should walk people through this. Yeah. We've never done Western Union, but uh, we can take payment through wire transfers, checks, money orders. Um, we've even taken Bitcoin. So um, that was it, another question. Yes. People were asking if they could pay through Bitcoin. Yes, absolutely. And we have a lot of people getting out of Bitcoin right now because um, as we start to head into a, a tougher economy, this isn't going to be an economy that's really going to make cryptocurrency get back to the levels that we saw two and a half years ago where Bitcoin was like $70,000. It's just not going to happen. This, right now is the time where you just um, don't mm. stick your neck out far and just uh, regroup mm. and um, go into anything stable. Well, that's true. And, and, and I'll put this out there, too. Um, when it talks about in, in, in scripture, when Peter goes silver and gold, have I not? When, when the beggar w was asking, you know, the Lord gives us what we need. In fact, many times he gives us more than what we need. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to be good stewards with it. He doesn't want to give us something to squander it. This is why when the ruler came back, he got mad at the man that buried the talent and didn't do anything with it and didn't multiply anything with it because what he gave him, he did nothing with. So with what the Lord gives us, we have to be good stewards with it. And we have to use wisdom and make sound financial decisions with it. Otherwise, the Lord sometimes doesn't give it until we prove to him we can handle it. When we prove to him we can handle it, and we start to understand things and we start to in different areas take take our finances and begin to you know begin to save and begin to bless others and then begin to you know put it in certain assets you know that is called using wisdom is what it's called absolutely so i wanted to cover that because somebody brought that up in there i think it was that exact scriptures Oh, here's a good one. Can you roll over retire funds? Norma yeah. Lamb is asking. Yeah, absolutely. And we do it every single day. So I'll just break down the process in just a few sentences. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say you had uh, $100,000 in a Fidelity IRA retirement account. Um, mm -hmm. All you would do is just say, um, I want to transfer part of that or all of that into an IRA that holds precious metals. Then we would send you by DocuSign a five page application form that we pre fill out for you. So it's just pretty much going to have your name, address. Um, maybe you're with Fidelity and the dollar amount, the Fidelity account number. All you need to do is just go on and click sign and sign it and send it back to us. Then we send you a three page transfer form that will transfer those funds from, say, Fidelity over to Equity Institutional, which is who we use for our gold and silver IRAs. And then we and then the waiting game begins. It's that's where we wait for the transfer from Fidelity of your funds to go to equity. And um, sometimes they just take four or five days. Um, usually they take a week to 10 days. Once in a great while, they'll take three or four weeks. And when that happens, it's usually your existing custodian like Fidelity putting up a little bit of a fight. They'll uh, sometimes fill out part of their um, they have to do a transfer form, too. So, so sometimes they'll fill it out incorrectly on purpose to try to slow down the process and frustrate you so that you change your mind and don't do the rollover. But you have to stay the course and fight back, fight against the banks and, and take care of you and your family. Exactly. I agree with that. Um, because the banks, you know, banks are, they're fickle, they're finicky. Um, they don't like to let go of your money, even though it is yours. Uh, you know, banks will give harder times about larger um, amounts of money being moved. Sometimes I'll even call and make sure you really filled out that check. I've had that happen before. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. banks have a tendency to do these things. So he is right about that, that they will have a tendency maybe sometimes to slow down something you have filled out because banks are the only institution that don't have their own money. 
they all run off of everybody else's mm -hmm. money. So if you think about it that way, uh, they tend to get a little fickle sometimes when yep. you want to move it. Uh, Judith is asking, how much does it cost to buy gold from you? So is there a certain percentage or something that uh, 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 a fee for purchasing it? Well, um, I would recommend people start with at least a couple thousand dollars. And for that amount, usually I recommend silver. When we get to the five to 10,000 amount, then I recommend that you go, you can go with gold and silver. But as okay. far as what it costs specifically, there's um there's a few hundred different assets for gold that we have access to that we help people invest in. And um, each one of them has a different premium. So, so some people will get kilo gold bars that have 32.15 ounces of gold in just one bar. Some people will buy uh, pre-1933 gold coins. Some of those have one ounce, some have a half ounce, some have um, mm -hmm. a quarter ounce, some have a tenth of an ounce. So it just depends on specifically what gold we're talking about. So, so for the person that asked that, if you go on and fill out the online form on bh-pm.com, I'll have somebody walk you through it. Oh, that would be wonderful. Um, GH is asking, is it a good idea to convert a 401k into an IRA? I think it's a really great idea. So, so here's why. Um, if you work at a company it, and let's say it's the company that the 401k is generated at, mm -hmm. there is a slight chance that they would not let you roll over all of the 401k. So in that event, you would need to check with human resources at your company and find out what percentage of your 401k that they would let you roll over. So I think it's a great idea. Now, here's why I say it's a great idea. Let's say you used to work at AT&T or some other company of, of that size, and they set up a 401k for you. Well, and let's say you don't work there anymore. Likely there's not anybody managing that anymore. So, yeah. so however you set it up when you were working there with whatever um, mutual funds or stocks mm -hmm. that you might have in it, um, those may not be the best ones to have now. So if, if no one's really helping you with it, that might be a good time to just um, take those funds and roll it into a precious metals mm -hmm. IRA wait for us to come out of this, this down stock market. And when the stock market's robust again, then you could always roll your, um, your 401k that you put into gold and silver back into another retirement account that holds stocks. So if for people that do move into a precious metals IRA, this isn't like a, a lifelong decision. You don't have to leave it there forever. You can transfer it back out anytime you want. Uh, Elaine Maxwell Egbert asked, will they let me cash out a small old IRA? Do they allow yes. you to do that? They do. And um, mm -hmm. and oftentimes people will, will reach out. They'll say, um, I heard about you from Amanda Grace. I've got uh, an IRA that has $7,000 in it. Could you help me roll that over into a precious metals IRA? And usually we'll tell you that, um, that it's not cost effective for $7,000 because it's going to cost you about $200 just to set up the account. And then every year is going to be about another hundred dollars to store the metals. And then another hundred dollars for um, um, a maintenance charge that equity institutional does to be able to, to look at your, um, your IRA. So I wouldn't think it's really worth it to pay $200 a year for the 7,000 that your penalty might only be a couple hundred dollars to go ahead and close that out and, uh, and invest in physical gold or silver that you have in your home. But for that, I would check with your financial advisor and make sure that, um, that that's something that, um, I, I wouldn't want people to cash out their retirement accounts. I mean, I, I can't really say everybody out there, if you have less than 25,000, cash them out. Cause I think that that would be um, probably not the best for everybody. It's just more on a case by case basis. basis. Yeah. Okay. So Cindy Pittman asks, what is the penalty from the 401k? So if you have to take the money out to roll it over, or you have to take the money out for any reason, do you know, it, it, do the penalties vary? Okay. So for the rollover to move the 401k from where you have it now into mm -hmm. a precious metals IRA, there's no penalty whatsoever and you're not being taxed at all. But okay. yeah, here's how you would be um, penalized or even taxed. Let's say that you have this 401k and you just um, you haven't thought about it for a while. And now you're watching me on with Amanda and you're, you're like, hey, I think I'm going to take 50,000 out of there. 
and you call them and you tell them I'd like to take a $50,000 distribution, well, that's going to be a taxable event. That, that will definitely be taxed. But if you did take that distribution and let's say a week or two later, you go, oh, no, I shouldn't have done that. You have 60 days to roll it over into a new investment to make it a non-taxable event. Okay, well, that that is wonderful advice because there's a lot of rules with this, and I think people get intimidated sometimes. Yes. You know, so it's nice, Andrew, that you're willing to come on here and kind of walk them through it and help it them is. so they can make some wise decisions here. Yes, it, it's um, your financial advisors aren't always going to give you the advice that is good for you. Oftentimes, they're just going to try to protect what they already have and just tell you, you shouldn't be doing gold and silver. Just keep it where it's at. The market's down a bunch already. If you sell it now, you sell it at a loss. Just wait for it to come back. And that really just benefits them. And if you ask them and say, could, um, could I buy gold and silver through you, physical gold and silver? They'll say, no, you can't, but you can invest in gold and silver through me. And those are various paper-backed gold and silver assets. And I just recommend staying away from those. Yes. Uh, this is interesting, Andrew, because I know you know about crypto. Yeah. I don't necessarily know much about it, except when I prophesied that huge crash that happened from the Lord in crypto. But oh, yeah. Andrea Peck is asking, if you don't trade crypto but own XRP, do you need an XRP ledger? Not sure what that is. What is a cold wallet and how much does it cost to get one? Okay, so, so um, a lot has changed in regards to that in the last five years. So before... You, you couldn't store XRP on, on any website that you purchased it on. So just imagine if, um, let's say that you have an Ameritrade stock account, okay? When you buy Apple stock, you can see that Apple stock right on your um, TD Ameritrade interface. Well, when you buy XRP and let's say you, you, you buy it on, um, trying to think of one of the, um, of one of the um, um, exchanges that has it, um, so let, let's say Coinbase used to have XRP, but they don't now. But let's hypothetically say you, you bought XRP on Coinbase and uh, you just want to leave it there on the Coinbase storage. That's what they call hot storage. Hot storage is um, something that could possibly get hacked by a bad guy and they could steal your crypto. So they say, they say that it's best to have it stored in a cold storage wallet. So you could have a ledger. You could have this uh, little thumb drive. It's a special ledger that you could send your XRP or your Bitcoin to, and um, it transfers out of your actual online account and onto the actual thumb drive. Then you just have to worry about not losing the thumb drive. If you put it in a safe or in a bank safe deposit box and you remember the passwords, then you're good and you can't get hacked, but then you run the risk of losing it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I know. I think crypto is something people uh, get confused about also. I, I You know, crypto and, and how to trade it and what goes on in, in, in that type of market. And so it's good just for people to get a little taste of it. Exactly. Just a little taste of it, just in case they're curious. OK, so, uh, well, we had another question about does it come right to your front door, the gold and silver? Yes, it does. It does. And so... Um, so oftentimes people will tell us things like, um, I would like to go ahead and make the investment today, but don't ship it for a week because I'm going to be out of town for a few days That's and we can do that. And it, it's always great to know up front because otherwise uh, sometimes we can get it shipping. Like if somebody makes a purchase, we can ship it in 24 to 48, 48 hours and we, we want to know before we've actually shipped it. But um, we can work around whatever people's parameters are for receiving it. If you don't want it to come at home, we can have it held at your local FedEx or UPS store as well. And uh, it's insured until you sign for it. Okay, well, that's wonderful to know. You know, Andrew, I'm looking for one more question here before we end, because we are we are at about 40 minutes right now. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of just searching here to see if anybody else has any questions? Because some of them were duplicate questions. So a lot of people were asking the same thing. Uh, and so let's see. Here we go. Here's a good question from Rhonda. So if you have a gold IRA, does it increase in value in the IRA, just like my current one with stocks does? Oh, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. it, it actually does. So, um, so gold and silver fluctuate in value every single day. 
and your IRA that holds gold and silver will do that. And mm -hmm. really making money with the IRA is really our secondary goal here. Our primary goal is to protect what we have because um, we're heading into tough times here. So we want to protect what we have more than we actually want to make money with it. Yes. Now we'll, we'll end with this last question. Marla Morbido wants to know if, you, if she could call, will you help her with her coins? Absolutely. Um, people oftentimes say, well, I've got coins here. I want to know what I have. And uh, I usually will just tell them, um, take a cell phone picture and then, and then text it to me. So if you go out and, and fill out the online form on bh-pm.com, just say, I've, I've got some silver and some gold coins. I'd like to know what I have or maybe you have some that you'd like to sell, it, just let us know and we'll get you to the right person. Wonderful. Well, Andrew, thank you. You always come on and are willing to answer so many different questions of our viewers and we very much appreciate that. And you could go to bh-pm.com. Well, thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to do this anytime. It's um, you know, sometimes I forget because I do this every single day. There are certain things that I feel are implied but I talk to different people every day and I realize that nothing's implied. It's fine. Reach out to us with any question you have as basic as you, you think it might be. And we'll be happy to help. Thank you, Andrew. Yep. Thanks for having me back. I hope to be back soon. You'll be back on soon. Thank you. God bless. Wonderful. Thank you. And that concludes our broadcast with Andrew Sorcini. You know, the reason I bring Andrew on uh, from time to time is because People have a lot of questions about financial matters, basically. And sometimes they don't know who to ask. They don't know where to go and they don't know who to trust. And by bringing Andrew on and he's so willing to just answer whatever questions you have, well, sometimes you could get your questions answered. That helps you make better sound financial decisions. You see, we think in the kingdom of God, we're not held accountable uh, for sound financial decisions, but we are. Because what God gives us, he expects us to be good stewards of. And sometimes people, you know, have a harder time than others in matters of finance, what to do with it, what should I do, what should I not do, is this safe, is this not safe? And so basically, it's good when we can have somebody come on that can give you a little bit more financial wisdom, that can help you with your questions, um, and that loves to answer them and will suggest you pray about things before you do anything. So we will like that a lot about Andrew as well, that he does that. And we just hope it gives you a little more understanding. We're supposed to be good stewards. The Lord expects it. Uh, there's a lot written in scripture about that. And so this is why we do this just from time to time. So, and I'm, I'm so glad it was easy to understand that his answers, Andrew has a way of answering these questions that make difficult things easier to understand for people. And we appreciate that as well. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I know this is an afternoon broadcast again tomorrow night though, 7 p.m. is Grace Out Loud. And Marty Grisham is going to be here with us and we're going to be doing some uh, amazing teaching for the Lord. So we tune in then. We'll make an announcement. It'll go out, but it'll be 7 p.m. tomorrow night, Thursday, Eastern Standard Time, Grace Out Loud. We'll be here on Ark of Grace. So thank you everyone for joining us today. God bless you and keep the faith. We love you. Armor up according to Ephesians chapter six and have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. We're going to have pictures tomorrow night of Bixby, the little kitten that has now come here to our location here at Ark of Grace. And so we will have pictures of him to show you tomorrow night. Oh my goodness. He's just so adorable. I don't even know what to do with him. So he's going to be here living with us, Bixby. So tomorrow night, we will definitely have pictures for you. He came a couple of days ago and uh, we're looking very forward. We're going to put out some video of him as well that we took. We're going to try to get some more footage of him interacting uh, with all the animals. He, he is up in a room right now and we bring the animals up to see him while he's adjusting to his new environment. So we will have updates on that tomorrow night as well. God bless everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Hello everyone, this is Amanda Grace and I wanted to tell you, if you are interested in where you should invest financial matters, if precious metals, if gold and silver is something that you should invest in or should be a part of your portfolio, please go to bh-pm.com 
at his bh-pm.com, Beverly Hills Precious Metals, Andrew Sorcini, who has been on Art of Grace before. He loves to answer our viewers' questions, is more than happy to guide you and to answer your questions and to help you in those financial matters. So please go to bh-pm.com today. Thank you, everyone. God bless. You want to support an amazing patriot that's doing so much for our country and be a blessing you can go to mypillow.com and use promo code ARK ARK to save up to 66% or sometimes more off of all my pillow products they are so much more than just pillows they have amazing bathrobes they have sheets they have slippers they of course have pillows and they even have dog beds and i will tell you a fun fact noble our pig at the animal sanctuary that many of you know and love has indeed slept on a my pillow dog bed so if you'd like to be a blessing go to mypillow.com and use promo code arc god bless everyone if you are looking for an excellent doctor if you are looking to get healthier if you are looking for guidance go to sherwood.tv forward slash Amanda Grace. Dr. Mark Sherwood and his lovely wife, Dr. Michelle, have the Functional Medical Institute in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Both myself and my husband, Chris, and let me tell you, God bless Dr. Sherwood because Chris was a top nut to crack on this. But Chris is finally on board and we are both patients of his. I have to tell you, they have helped us tremendously. They also have an amazing line of products that are excellent for your health and can help you get your health back on track. So if you would like to make an appointment with them or you want to go see uh, what they are all about, what products they have, you can go to Sherwood.tv forward slash Amanda Grace. If you would like to grow your own food with what we see going on right now in the world with not only food supplies, but what they are doing to our food, you can go to amandagracegrows.com. These are amazing hydroponic growers. In fact, we have one in our parrot room, and this is an indoor one we have where you can grow food all year round, actually. Vegetables all year year round and we are doing that actually for our birds and our animals at our sanctuary they also have outdoor ones they actually yield 30 percent more and grow the vegetables three times faster so if you would like to learn more go to amandagracegrows.com god bless and i have to tell you something they work it is an alternative to big pharma based on quantum physics, over 40 scripture verses written into these patches for everything from blood sugar, anxiety, pain, neuropathy, to immune system boost, dog pain. They are very yes. sincere about um, having alternatives to big pharma. We are a big advocate of natural solutions to help with pain and, and, and blood sugar and a host of other issues. I yeah. tried the pain patches and yeah, I gave them I to my uh, VP of operations also, Ronnie. And she said they worked as well. She was yeah. quite shocked actually, but she said they worked so, and they worked when I used them. When you connect it to your body, the skin patch changes your brain waves. Sugar, this one is neuropathy. I actually have it on. And we use this on Toby actually, because Toby's about eight years old. And from being paralyzed years ago and the Lord miraculously healing him, he has a little leftover with his joints and his hips. So we actually give him the doggy pain patches. What was he doing? He was running? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I walked him out and wow, he's boom. And he got power. I said, no way. And I don't know. I said, Amanda, what? What did you do to him? To <laughs> so it's good. 